X-Play, TV's most watched video game show. Today on X-Play, we've got the latest breaking news on EA's $2 billion bid for Take-Two Interactive and Grand Theft Auto 4. Plus, Sony President Phil Harrison is calling it quits. What's it mean for the PS3? Then, our world premiere hands-on demo of Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas 2. And, backed by popular demand, we have the return of X-Play favorite Special Agent Bob and Secret Agent Steve. Plus, Kristen Hull with her latest cheat. It's game time! Welcome to X-Play, the molten core of the gaming planet. I am Morgan Webb. And I am Adam Sessler, and we're coming to you from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles on Monday, February 25th. We're back from GDC, and despite the conference being over, big news just keeps on breaking. EA wants to buy Take-Two, and Phil Harrison has resigned from Sony. On today's show, we'll have the latest breaking news on those two developments, plus a world premiere hands-on demo of Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas 2. Then we preview what some are saying is the best PSP game ever, God of War Chains of Olympus. Plus, secret agents Bob and Steve are back. But first, Adam has all of the latest news in today's gaming update. Thank you, Morgan. Well, big news from two very big companies today. Mega publisher Electronic Arts, whose stable of franchises include Madden, Rock Band, Skate, and Spore, has publicly announced a $2 billion cash bid for Take-Two Interactive. EA has had conversations with Take-Two for over a year now, but they say they have held off to avoid getting in the way of GTA 4's development. Well, Sunday, EA went public with this knowledge, potentially in an effort to motivate reaction among Take-Two shareholders. Weighing on many gamers' minds is the concern that EA may tone down the controversial content in some of Take-Two's title. In a conference call this morning, Electronic Arts' CEO, John Riccatello, offered these words of comfort by saying, quote, we're notably unpositioned in M-rated content, and this will give us the best M-rated content. When asked about the motivation behind the proposed purchase of Take-Two and their development team, EA's Jeff Brown told X-Play, quote, we like them all. Take-Two is a powerhouse of great studio teams creating great titles. The premium we've offered reflects our belief that this company is more than just GTA. While this may be exciting to many, there are obviously employees in both companies worried about restructuring and layoff. Brown responded, it's too early to be talking about how we'll manage the Take-Two team. We want to focus on getting our proposal accepted. Take-Two, publisher of the Grand Theft Auto series, Bioshock, and Civilization franchises, had so far rejected the $2 billion bid from Electronic Arts. Finding the offer premature given the pending release of GTA 4, which would undoubtedly solidify the company's value. Well, game or no game, in wake of this news, take 2 stock price has jumped 47% to within 25 cents of EA's asking price. Despite the current stock value being so close to EA's offer, a $2 billion cash purchase might look very appealing to take 2 stockholders. And in today's other huge story, Sony Worldwide Studios president Bill Harrison has announced his official resignation. February 29th will mark the end of his 15-year tenure with the company. In a recent interview with GamesIndustry.biz, Harrison expressed his frustration in regards to Sony's reluctance to fully embrace social gaming. Whether or not this has anything to do with his departure is still unclear. It is worth noting that Home still hasn't been released, a PlayStation 3 feature that Harrison has championed since its announcement at last year's GDC. Unconfirmed rumors say Harrison may be heading to Atari. And personally, I've known the man for several years now, and I would like to wish him the best in all of his future endeavors. Well, that's all for today's gaming update, but be sure to tune in to X-Play every day this week for continuing coverage on these developing stories. And now, let's go over to Morgan. Thanks, Adam. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas 2 might be a little bit of a mouthful, but it's actually the follow-up to one of the most successful first-person shooters on the Xbox 360. Take some cover. We've got a world premiere hands-on demo. Back in 2006, Tom
Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas revitalized the aging series by adding regenerating health and much improved artificial intelligence. Part 2 looks to make the online bloodbath even better. You'll get to create your character from the ground up, play with even smarter bots, and choose from a virtual arsenal of brand spanking new weaponry. Say hello to Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas 2. With us today from Ubisoft is game designer Steve Masters. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me. All right, how does the storyline of this game fit with the first Vegas? Well, what we're doing with this one is it's both before, during, and after. So you're trying to make it as confusing uh, as possible for Pretty everybody. much, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But what we wanted to do is make sure that the, the storyline was complete and that we okay. finished all of the arcs that we opened up in Vegas 1. Okay, well, that's a scary thing to say because then that's suggesting, you know, we were sort of hoping this was going to be part of a trilogy, but is this going to be the last thing? No, I'm sorry. This one, we're finished. Finishing Vegas. <gasps> Why? Well, we felt that it was time to bring everything to a close and, uh, you know, maybe head out to some new places next time. You got other stuff to do, is what you're telling me. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> let's talk about the actual gameplay um, and the single player experience. How have you improved that? Well, we took a few core approaches on this one. We wanted to improve. Uh, you know, we knew that we had a winning formula, so we didn't want to go too far in terms of changing things. Well, people, I think, know what to expect when they're going to pick up one of these games. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so what we wanted to do was more subtle improvements. We took things like the take cover, and we've, uh, you know, really changed that experience up by adding destructible cover, okay. um, sprinting, and bullet penetration. So mm. you have three things to change that right there. Uh, and what that gives us is a, a really nice little flavor into the mechanics where everything's just that little bit snappier and nicer now and it feels a lot more realistic uh, things behave the way you expect them to behave cool oh we're gonna get a little sniping action oh there it goes there yeah. goes that that poor guy <laughs> he had a nice life i hope um, so let's talk about co-op mode. What can we expect for that? Okay, well this time, one of the things that we wanted to make sure that we could do this time was actually play the whole storyline okay. in co-op. So now you have a drop-in, drop-out. Great. Uh, you can just invite your friends along and say, right, you know, I'm doing this really fun bit here. Come on, join me, and uh, we'll play some co-op. Uh, so, you, so you can actually you can run through the entire campaign mode in co-op. Absolutely, and we don't reduce any of the storyline like uh, we did in Vegas 1 or anything like that. It's all just, everything is exactly the same. Okay, let's talk about multiplayer. What, what are some of the multiplayer additions? Well, we've got a couple new game modes. Yeah. Uh, We've got uh, Total Conquest, uh, uh, sorry, excuse me. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, new game modes in uh, the multiplayer. We've got uh, Team Leader okay. and Demolition. In Team Leader, it's a really fun mode. Uh, you have a guy who's nominated as the leader, and what he, he has a couple special powers, basically. He's the focus of the respawning for the team. So if you kill the opposing mm. team leader, they stop being able to respawn. Oh, right. Yeah. And then so the guys were going to have to basically finish up the match on their own on without the being guys. able to respawn. So then exactly. you get down to the wire at that point. So everyone's looking for the leader. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and to spice it up just a little bit, the leader, everybody that he kills is not allowed to respawn as well. So he has an incentive to get out there and right. actually take people down himself. Okay, let's talk about the ACES system a little bit. Sure. Or ACES. Are you supposed to just say it as whole? Oh, let's call it ACES. Oh, right, let's call it ACES. <laughs> Uh, so it's uh, basically we wanted to take the, the PEC system from uh, Vegas 1 and just expand it a little bit. Uh, so what we decided to do is unlock all of the weaponry and gadgets and things through the system called ACES, which is basically a reward for how well you play the game. Uh, so as you're playing in single player and co-op and multiplayer, you're always being scored about how tactically and how well you're playing. So you're always earning. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's three core ways that uh, we're looking at your performance, and that's with close quarter battle skills, okay. marksmanship stuff, and assault. Steve, thanks for coming by. Thanks so much for having me. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas 2 will be out on March 18th, but right now let's head back over to Adam. All right, well, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas 2 is sure to be a top seller. Well, let's take a look at what 360 games are the current kings of the cash register in today's x -Licks. At number five is Devil May Cry 4, the hack and slash that answers the question of whether or not you can still be a badass if you go prematurely gray. 
Number four is Call of Duty 4. The game that begs the question, stop and tower or juggernaut? Scholars may never agree. At number three is Army of Two. You pre-order monkeys must really be looking forward to some hot guy and guy co-op action. And number two is, well, look at this. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas 2. If you're that into the game, make sure you catch our special show entirely dedicated to Clancy's latest opus on March 11th. And number one is Lost Odyssey, a game that proves you can ride a mix of janky packaging and outdated gameplay to the top of the chart. Coming up in today's cheat, Kristen Holt shows you how to survive in Devil May Cry 4. Then we head to Hades in our preview of God of War, Chains of Olympus. Plus, stop emailing us already. Bob and Steve are back and up to no good when X-Play returns. Stay put. <laughs> First kiss. Welcome back to X Play. Devil May Cry 4 can be one hard to handle hack and slash, but whatever you do, don't sell your soul to Old Scratch just to beat the secret mission. That would be stupid. Sell it to Kristen Holt instead. You'll get a better deal. Thanks, Morgan. The key to a long life isn't antioxidants. I've got a Devil May Cry 4 cheat that will keep you breathing longer than any dose of vitamin C. So you're playing Devil May Cry 4, huh? Perhaps you're finding all those little health spawn a little tough. Maybe you're running a little low on health. Perchance you just need a few more hit points. Don't tear out your perfectly coiffed silver lock. We've got the solution. There's only one way to increase your HP, and that's with Blue Orb. One way to bag 12 guaranteed Blue Orb fragments is to complete the secret mission sprinkled liberally throughout the game. Mission number three is pretty easy to find. Just look behind the staircase in the soldier's graveyard. Beating the mission, well, that's a little tougher. The goal here is to raise your style ranking without attacking, not even once. Good luck, you little peacenik. One way to pull this off is to bounce off the heads of all your foes. But that's tough, and you could accidentally hit an attack. A better way is to get your enemies to attack each other. After unlocking the hold skill, just grab one of the fiends and use him as a demon shield. Extra points for taunting his buddies while you hold him hostage. It might take a few tries, but soon you'll have a blue fragment to call your own. Secret Mission 6, located in the security corridor, wants you to play keep away with a scarecrow. Keep them alive until the chimeras are dead, and you win. You're going to want to use the hold again here. Pick up the scarecrow and jump over the chimeras. If they hit you, you'll have to start over, so steer clear of them as you start to hike up the mountain. When you get to the top, deposit the adorable little demon and run back to waste the chimera. Once the scarecrow is safe, the prize is yours. One of the toughest challenges in the game is number seven, found in the meeting room. You're tasked with jumping around on disappearing platforms while being attacked by Mephisto. While you could memorize the complex pattern of vanishing platforms while simultaneously guarding yourself from knockdown attacks, you could just cheat. And heck, this wouldn't be a cheat without a first-rate, old-fashioned, honest-to-goodness cheat. Before you start the mission, take out a few scarecrows to power up Pandora's weapon. Then, when you accept the mission, switch over to gunslinger mode and whip out everyone's favorite airborne weapon. Come fly the friendly skies of our unit missile battery airline. With a full disaster gauge, you'll have plenty of time to get to that elusive fragment. With these tricks up your sleeve, you'll be well on your way to maxing out your HP. Be sure to check out g4tv.com slash cheat for the latest tips and tricks. Right now, I'm going to send it back over to Adam. Thank you, Christian. Well, staying alive in Devil May Cry 4 also has a lot to do with what weapon you're wielding. So, what's your favorite? That's today's x question. Is it A, the Red Queen Sword, B, the Blue Rose Revolver, or C, the Devil Bringer? Log on to g4tv.com slash xplay and let us know. We'll have your answers later in the show. And when xplay returns, Kratos gets portable as we preview God of War, Chains of Olympus for the PSP. Stay tuned. <laughs> Smash Bugs for free. Indie Games begins in 60 seconds. Welcome to Indie Games, a minute's worth of free online fun. 
Now, when it comes to killing flies, bashing them between two boulders is about as thorough as you can get. But it does take a certain amount of skill. And lucky you, you can hone those skills with angry boulders. Now, using the Q, A, and Z keys, you crush a pair of boulders together to squash as many bugs as you can. Just be sure to avoid the beetles, or it's game over. And naturally, you want to avoid the boulders yourself, of course. And as always, when you're working with hazardous materials, please remember to wear your eye protection. Now, if you want, you can hit me up at g4tv.com slash indie game for links to this and other fun stuff. But until next time, I'm Kevin Pereira asking, what do you want for nothing? Steve. Welcome back to X-Play. Kratos may be a larger-than-life mortal who can take down a god, but he's been shrunk for the new PSP game, God of War Chains of Olympus. Here's our preview. Kratos, there is not much time. Olympus needs you. I grow tired of the gods' request to leave. I have given enough. Not by a long shot, you haven't, my Spartan friend. All you mythology mavens out there who just can't get enough of the hack and flash action of early Greece have something to cheer about. Less than a year after God of War 2 was released on the PS2, Kratos is back once more, kicking ancient ass and taking names. Names like Morpheus, Helios, and yes, Athena. And this time, he is portable. God of War Chains of Olympus for the PSP chronicles the now legendary 10 years of servitude that Kratos promised the gods in exchange for redemption from his sins. So basically, we get to run around the Mediterranean after he's killed his family, but before he becomes the god of war. Charged with saving civilization from Morpheus, the lord of dreams, Kratos will have to work his way through dangerous enemies and devious puzzles. Chains of Olympus stays remarkably close to the style of gameplay that was so successful in the previous two console titles. Why mess with a good thing? If you've played God of War, you'll recognize everything from your blades of chaos to your surly attitude. Is this all you would have me do? To your mythological naughty goddess bit. This is looking to be a great addition to the franchise, with graphics that keep the look of the original while pushing the processing power of the PSP. Is that nothing else? We'll have the full review for God of War Change of Olympus tomorrow. But now, we're about to break. But before we do, let's take a look at who's keeping their combo up and racking up the most points in today's leaderboard for The Club. favorite covert agents are back. Get ready for the return of Bob and Steve. Yes, that Bob and Steve. You're welcome. Gridirect.com. This show also available on G4 On Demand. Welcome back to X-Play. Now, early in the show, we asked you what your preferred Devil May Cry 4 weapon was. The current leader is Devil Bringer with a little over 52%. But now, let's go over to Morgan, who's about to get you reacquainted with some old friends. When you talk about lowering the bar for secret agents, two names come to mind, Bob and Steve. Well, our favorite spies are away for a while, undoubtedly not training. And now they're back. Gentlemen, we welcome you with open arms. Who's that? Is that the contact? I, I don't know. Wh who are you talking about? That guy. Which, which, which guy? The only guy in the room. The guy with the cart? The guy with the broom. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bob, I think he just killed our contact. Oh, crap. When America needs a hero, when freedom stands alone, America's top agents will defend our liberty from those who wish us harm. Let us join Special Agent Bob and Secret Agent Steve, two of the finest official unofficial splinter cells. I can't believe you just killed our contact. Well, it's hard to see in these things. You should have said something. Like what? 
What should he have said? Uh, don't stab me in the neck. I'm your contact. Damn it, Bob. This isn't a joke. Who's laughing? The system is flawed. Next time, the contact should wear a name tag. Or a wig. Besides, he was a double agent. That just makes things even more confusing. He wasn't a double agent. He was a facility services manager. <laughs> a, a what? A janitor. He was a f***ing janitor, Bob. Fine, I'll fix it. Yeah, I think they're gonna notice that. Just call Stacy and find out who our backup contact is. I hate you so much. HQ, this is Secret Agent Steve. Go ahead, Steve. This is Stacy. Hey, Stace. We don't happen to have a backup contact, do we? Backup contact? You know, the one we call when the first one dies. Otis is dead? Tell her it was friendly fire. Shut up. He got hit with friendly fire. Where are you going with the body? Friendly fire? You, you engaged in a gun battle? Not exactly. Well, then, how exactly did he get hit with friendly fire? His throat ran into my knife. Oh, God. Uh, hold on. Ugh, oh, this song is so depressing. Yeah. Is this from a movie? I don't know. Okay, guys, I'm back. Here, here's what you want to do, okay? Hey, Stace, what song was that? Excuse me? When you put us on hold, there was this song. It sounded familiar. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. Well, hang on. We'll put you on hold, and then you can tell us what it is. Guys, no, I don't... We're in the middle of a mission. Don't you think she has better things to do than tell us Her job is to give us intel, and I can't concentrate until I know where I heard that song. So? The song is called Canon in D. It was written in 1680. Uh, people also played a lot at weddings. Can we uh, finish the mission now? Would you just drop it? All I'm saying is why would anybody want to play that song at their wedding? I don't know. Join us next week when Steve and Bob disarm more terrorists with their amazing cunning and stealth. So I say to her lady, if you wanted the parking space so bad, you should... Whoa! Well, that's all the quality programming we have for you today, but be sure to stop by tomorrow for another all-new X-Play at 8. On tomorrow's show, we review the video game version of the movie Jumper, and you better believe we hope it's better than Beowulf. Then we have a sneak peek of this week's Zero Punctuation review from The Escapist, and, you know, I'm going to predict some bleeps. Plus, we are going to review God of War Chains of Olympus and see if Ready or Don has another handheld hit on their hands. And if you're lucky, we'll even throw in a preview of Gran Turismo 5 Prologue. But we're not going to give you the whole preview, just part of it. You'll get the full one by Christmas, I promise. All right, thank you so much. Thanks for watching.